Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've decided I wanted to do a recap of the Jeffrey Paschal trial that is actually going on right now. It started yesterday, October 6th. It started in Knoxville, Tennessee. It is still going on today. Now I was watching it earlier. You can actually watch the trial live on YouTube. I will link a channel in the description box below. It's Court TV. You can watch it as it as it's happening. Um, I was watching it earlier. They took a lunch break and they will be on a lunch break um, for about another hour and then they will reconvene to continue with trial. But the video that I'm going to do today is their first day in court. I'm going to do a recap of what took place yesterday. And then tomorrow, I will do a recap of what took place today. Just so everybody can have um, a quick recap if you don't have time to watch the full stream to, to find out, you know, what's happening and what's going on. Now, back in June 2019, Jeffrey Patchell was charged with aggravated kidnapping, domestic assault, and interference with an emergency call after an altercation with his then fiance Kristen Wilson. Now, I do want to say this video is for entertaining purposes only. Do not take everything I state as facts. It will be something that um, I'm reading off another article or information that I've gotten from watching the live stream. My opinions, I will be sure to let you guys know if I'm giving my opinion. So anything that is stated otherwise will be something that I've gotten off the live stream or off of articles. Um, do not send hate to anyone mentioned in this video. This video is not intended to bully, harass, or attack anyone. And like I said, entertaining purposes only. Do your own research to draw your own conclusion as to what the truth may be in regards to um, the allegations against Jeffrey Paschal. Now, it says here that in the defense's opening statements, Jeffrey's attorneys actually told the jury that the injuries that Jeffrey's then fiance sustained were actually self-inflicted. She had a head injury, and they said that the head injury was allegedly caused by her hitting her head against a door frame prior to leaving the house that night. The defense also argues that Kristen's account of having her head bashed into the floor repeatedly going up four steps was physically impossible. He also argues that if the altercation lasted as long as Kristen claimed, her injuries would have been much more severe and she would have been hauled out of the house on a stretcher. That is what Jeffrey's attorneys are stating. They're basically saying that Kristen's story makes no sense because if she would have been attacked to that degree, then she would have had to be taken out on a stretcher. She would not have been able to walk out of the house and go to the neighbor's house to call the cops. Um, they are saying that the bashing the head into the floor, impossible, that her injuries would have been uh, much more severe. They also remind the jury that Kristen had strongly poured cocktails that night prior to this incident taking place. The first witness called by Kristen's attorney was the neighbor whose house that Kristen ran to the night of the incident. The neighbor described Kristen as looking like she had been in some sort of accident. After letting Kristen in her house, they actually called 911. Kristen testified next, and she shared her account of what happened that night. It lined up with everything that she stated in her order of protection filing that she filed after the incident took place back in 2019. And I, I actually think there's a copy of that here, so we will go over that in just a little bit. Kristen also revealed quite a bit of information that was actually not known via the court and police records, uh, which has previously been reported on in the past. So there's some new information that she talked about at the court hearing that we'll go over as well. So a brief list of the new things that she revealed uh, during her testimony are that they were engaged at the time of the incident on June 9th and that they have been engaged for months. All the previous reportings have stated that they were just boyfriend and girlfriend. So they were actually engaged. Um, Kristen started dating Jeffrey in 2017 and they broke up in April of 2018 because they disagreed about whether or not they were monogamous. Kristen believed they were and she said Jeffrey did not want them to be monogamous. Kristen also says she was angered when she found out well into the relationship that Jeffrey had not told her about all of his kids and his ex-wives. Wonder how long it was into their relationship that she found out about children and ex-wives. Because that's something that you should, 
you know, if this is the truth, that is something that should have been discussed probably in the first few dates. You kind of, hey, I got ex-wives, I have children. According to her, they were well into the relationship before she found out. Now, at the time of this incident, Kristen was a fourth grade teacher. Kristen insists that she only had champagne the night of the incident. And if that is true, the defense's notion of the waitress, who was Kristen's friend, serving strongly poured cocktails would not make sense and would not be true. That is the defense's story is that one of Kristen's friends was actually their waitress and she kept the drinks coming like, um, and the drinks were, were strong cocktails. During Kristen's testimony, the prosecution shared photos of her injuries taken by the police um, as they arrived on the scene that night. There were also ones taken at the hospital where Kristen was taken and photos were taken in the days following this incident. Now, the images are pretty graphic. I will show you guys the images, but just be forewarned, they are pretty graphic. If you want to kind of skip forward, you can do that to skip over the images. Here are some of the photos that were taken at the scene. As you guys can see, she has a really big knot on her forehead. Um, her story is that her head was banged going up the, the stairs, um, that her head was banged about four times, I believe she stated. Jeffrey's story is that she actually ran into the door frame. Also, you can see that she has a little bit of a black eye. There's a, a cut on her nose, a little cut on her nose. But that that's a really large knot on the forehead, I do have to say so myself. Now, here is a photo of the knot from the front. Um, you can tell it's red. Um, here's a photo of the back of her neck where she had some scrapes, some marks. That almost looks like a handprint, if I'm being honest. Uh, almost like someone grabbed her by the back of the neck. And that's where, you know, like three of the fingers really pressed into her neck. Um, her elbow really scraped up. And then her lip which was really busted, which is looking very nasty. Um, you can tell that it's swollen and the inside uh, looks like skin has been ripped off pretty much. So those are pictures from that night, I do believe. And here are pictures um, later on, uh, a few days later, both eyes are black. You can still see the goose egg uh, on her forehead, a photo of her hands where they, I guess they are bruised. I really can't tell, the photo's kind of dark. And then here is a photo of her foot where there's a bruise on the top of her foot and also bruised around um, like the ankle part of her foot as well and some scratches right there. And then here is, uh, I guess a few days after that where it was almost starting to heal. Um, her eyes, once again, really black. Still got the goose egg on her forehead um, with some redness to it, as you guys can see. So these pictures are terrible, you guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys this. On cross-examination, the prosecution got to question Jeffrey and they did not show these pictures. Everybody was mind blown that the prosecution did not show these pictures to the jury. They did not bring them up and say, what happened here? How did she get this injury? Nothing. So everybody was blown away today that the prosecution did not show these pictures. I don't even understand why. But to continue, clearly uh, Kristen had a very large bump on her forehead. Eventually it led to two black eyes. She had multiple bruises all over her body. She also had scrapes. She had carpet burn marks on her elbows and knees, which would be consistent with being dragged as she alleges. Now Jeffrey's story was that she actually fell outside over the hedges. Um, so if that is the case, the marks would have been made by like a cement sidewalk. Um, but, um, other people do feel that it is consistent with like carpet burn marks, which is what she stated it would have been. Um, also presented into evidence were photos taken inside Kristen's home where the incident took place. The photos include blood splattered on the walls and floor. Um, I'm going to show you guys some photos of blood smeared on the living room light switches. So there is um, one of the light switches on her walls. As you guys can see, there is blood on it. 
Now, at one point during the trial, it actually appeared that it could potentially be in jeopardy of a mistrial because one of the officers that was on the scene that night, he took the stand and he was asked to describe the injuries that was on Jeffrey Patchell that he saw on Jeffrey. And during the prosecutors asking him to only describe what they looked like, the officer offered up an opinion by stating that they appeared to be self-inflicted wounds. And he was not supposed to say that. Um, the original police report stated Jeffrey had scratch marks on his stomach and chest, which appeared to be self-inflicted. Um, he was only asked to describe what they looked like not his opinion of whether or not they were made by her or they were made by him. So when he stated that they appeared to be self-inflicted, that could potentially sway the jury to believe that. So it was, uh, th there was a little bit of, of a worry that this could lead to a mistrial. Now the judge and the attorneys, they took a sidebar. The witness was instructed to not offer up any opinions or conclusions. After being asked to describe the injuries again, the officer began by stating the injuries looked to be vertical symmetric scratch marks on Jeffrey's upper chest and symmetric scratch marks that started at his sternum and descended at an angle towards both of his hips. He stated Jeffrey also had horizontal scratch marks on his lower back. The officer demonstrated the location and the direction of the scratch marks with his own hand. So kind of like showing like how they went, you know, like doing it himself. So here's a photo of Jeffrey. As you guys can see, he's wearing blue jeans. He's handcuffed and I can't really make out anything, but I guess there's some scratch marks that they could see on him. There was body cam footage as well that was presented in court that showed the officers speaking with Kristen at her neighbor's house. There was also body cam footage of the officers speaking with Jeffrey at Kristen's house. He walks the officers through his versions of events of what happened, including showing the officers where Kristen allegedly slammed her own head into the wall outside their bedroom. The trial, like I said, is being streamed by Court TV, and most all the attorneys that are offering up their commentary during this broadcast stated that Kristen comes across as very believable. They also seem to agree that Kristen's injuries shown in the photos were not consistent with self-inflicted injuries. So the general consensus among the attorneys that are watching on this court TV and they're, um, they're watching with us, they're stating that they don't believe that these injuries are self-inflicted, that they appear to match with her timeline of events. The jury was dismissed around 4.30 p.m. After the jury left, the defense moved for a Rule 29 acquittal, which was denied by the judge. The prosecution and defense agreed that Jeffrey's prior convictions would not be brought up if he decided to testify. The attorney stated that there were drug offenses, which would be unrelated to the case. The judge mentioned Jeffrey's 2014 theft conviction, but the prosecutor stated that she was unable to obtain a certified copy um, of the police report, I'm assuming, so she wouldn't be able to bring that up either. That's really wild. You would think the prosecution will want to bring all these things up to kind of paint him in a certain light, you know, but she couldn't find the police report. I would feel like it would be almost top priority, like we need to find these police reports. Um, there was no mention of the multiple allegations of sexual assault and rape made by Jeffrey's ex-wives during the course of their custody cases. There was also no mention of the previous order of protection against Jeffrey filed by an ex-girlfriend in 2011 which was eight years prior to this incident even occurring. The defense attorney asked about lesser counts for the three charges and the judge listed off the potential lesser charges for assault and kidnapping. There was no lesser charge option for the interference with an emergency call charge. Jeffrey was also facing a vandalism charge and that was uh, stemming from this incident as well. According to the indictment, the vandalism charge was due to damage that Jeffrey allegedly did to the police vehicle he was in after being arrested. Here is an excerpt from the police report detailing Jeffrey's multiple outbursts while in transit to the police station after his arrest that night. So it says the arrestee was initially taken into custody without incident. While in custody, the arrestee attempted to kick out the windows of the patrol vehicle. Officers removed the arrestee from the vehicle and applied leg restraints. The arrestee made further attempts to damage the patrol vehicle while his legs were restrained. 
The arrestee was removed from the vehicle again and further restrained. Now, I'm assuming this outburst was probably captured by dash cam, body cam of the police officers. Um, so, I would feel like this would be uh, pretty convincing uh, as to his temper and the way he behaves when, uh, you know, upset. So, I'm not really sure if that's going to be used at some point, but I don't think so because it was not really mentioned and um, the vandalism charge has not been brought up as far as I'm aware. And in the articles that I'm reading, that's also stated as well, like not really sure what's going on with the vandalism charge, but not really hear much about it. But I would feel like that would be pretty uh, damaging evidence if they have it on a body cam showing him, you know, kicking at the windows and them having to take him out and restrain him and him acting um, really angry. It would feel like it would prove that maybe he was acting just as angry back at the house with his fiance. But so far, I haven't heard that the vandalism charge is even um, being pursued. So, the trial is still ongoing. It resumed this morning at 10 a.m. They're on a lunch break. They're going to pick back up here in about 45 minutes or so, and I'll be watching. And then tomorrow, I will do another recap. Also, I did tell you guys that Kristen shared her account of what happened that night, so I'm going to go over that right now. I wanted to give like the, the general recap before actually telling you guys like her whole side of the story. So her side of the story basically was that they went out earlier that night. She only had champagne. She said, when we got back to the house, I was attacked by Jeffrey Paschal. He repeatedly bashed, slammed my head into hardwood floors of my home. He dragged me through the house by my hair and continued throwing my body into walls and furniture. I know this because of the blood on my walls and furniture. Also, the couch was overturned and the kitchen table was moved several feet. I screamed for him to stop multiple times. This went on for approximately 30 minutes. My nose was dripping blood into my mouth, so he made me wash my face with the lights off and blow my nose. He flushed the toilet paper down the toilet when I was finished. He then ordered me to get into my bed, which I did to stop any further abuse. He got on my phone and began deleting all my contacts, texts, emails, voicemails, pictures um, between them as well. He spent about two hours on my phone while I laid in bed beside him pretending to be asleep. He pulled the screen off the front of my phone and disabled it so I could not call or text anyone. He then put it on the, on the bedside table. He also synced my iCloud to his MacBook. When he finished going through my phone, he tried to embarrass me and then apologized. I told him not to touch me and quickly jumped up out of bed and ran out the front door to my neighbor's house. I rang her doorbell and asked her to call 911, which she immediately did. So that's her uh, account of what happened that night. We've seen the photos. You guys can draw your own conclusions. Um, and we're going to pick back up tomorrow. I'll be putting out another video of what happened today because he took the stand today. He was questioned by his attorney and then he was cross-examined by the prosecution. And you guys, I, I hate to say this, but the prosecution did not do a good job at all. Um, so I'll put a video out tomorrow giving a recap of that as well. So I'm going to be keeping up with this, you guys, tomorrow, another video. As long as this is ongoing, I'll be watching it live on Court TV YouTube channel. And I'll be bringing you guys a recap so we can kind of keep up with it. You guys have seen the photos. You guys have heard her side of, of the events. You guys have heard her timeline of events. Do you guys feel like Jeffrey physically abused this woman? Or do you guys feel like she is lying? I do have to say today, there was some evidence that Jeffrey brought, for, brought forward that made it questionable if you believe it. I'll have to put that out there. If you believe that it is authentic evidence. There were some text messages that Jeffrey spoke about today where um, the girl, you know, said she was going to do this, basically, to hurt him because they weren't together. Um, but all this is subjective of whether or not what you believe, if you believe that these messages that Jeffrey spoke about today, if that's if that's true, if those are um, accurate messages between the two, or if they're uh, fake messages, you know. Um, but you guys leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. You guys have seen the photos. You guys have heard this story. Um, her story of events. Whose side are you on? Who do you believe? 
Um, the link to Court TV will be in the description box below. You guys can check it out. They will be picking back up in about an hour or so. So I'm going to catch back up with that. And I'll have another video out tomorrow of day two, a recap of the trial of Jeffrey Patchell. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everybody.